All right, so we have gone through the law of sines. We've gone through the law of cosines. And now we get to go through the law of law, sines and cosines word problems. Woo! <laughs> yeah! So we know when it comes to these things, our word problems are what's going to be on that final exam. So these problems that we're going to go through are going to be very similar to the ones that you will see because they like to throw these types of problems on there. So I'm going to start off with example one here with the word problems and then keep going on. I think there's only about four of them. But again, there's no practices here because there's going to be a, um, a project that you're going to do after you finish these. So again, there's no practices, but there's going to be a project after this. So let's go to example one here. Example one. And with this, I want you to go ahead and write down the problem. It's not that long. It's only three sentences, so it's not really a paragraph per se. So write it down. You can stop the video and then write it down and then come back. All right, so now that you have written down this, um, the example here, the word problem, we're going to go through it. So it says, closed to tourists since 1990, the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy leans at an angle of 84.7 degrees. The figure, show, the figure shows that 171 feet from the base of the tower, the angle of elevation to the top is 50. Find the distance to the nearest foot from the base of the tower to the, from the base to the top of the tower. So the biggest part here is whenever we start doing these, um, when I told you before and we did the law of sines and law of cosines, we were solving triangles, we had to find every single piece of that was missing on the triangle. When it comes to the word problems, you're not finding every piece, you're finding only that part they want you to find. So here, they don't want you to find every single part, every side and every angle. They just want you to find one specific side. If you look at that, the last part of here says, find the distance to the nearest foot, that's important, from the base to the top of the tower. So that's what they want you to find. So from the base to the top of the tower, is that this side over here, is that this side over here, or this side down here? And hopefully everybody said this side right here is what you're trying to find. Because that's from the base to the top of the tower. This is considered our tower right here, in other words. If you didn't realize that, that's the tower. All right, so the rest of the stuff has already been filled in for you. Sometimes they'll give you a problem that stuff is filled in, sometimes they won't. So here it was already filled in for you, and we'll do some problems where they aren't, and you have to fill it in yourself. But here, if you look at it, they gave you um, that it leans at 84.7 degrees. So it's leaning at this degree right here. They say that, um, that the figure shows that it's 171 feet from the base of the tower. So we're talking about here to the base of the tower, that's 171 feet. So that's why we have 171 down here, because it's 171 feet from the base of the tower. The bottom of the tower, in other words. Okay. And then this talks about the angle of elevation. And I want to make sure that you have this because this pops up at times. I want to make sure you know what it means. And hopefully you have seen this before. But looking at angle of elevation, angle of elevation, angle of elevation. I'm going to give you a quick definition here. That's my definition, not really the definition that's the correct one or the, not correct, but the, um, the formal definition. But this is just an angle from the ground up. An angle from the ground up. Okay, so... That means this one from the ground up, that's why this is 50 degrees right here. This is the ground right here, and then up right there, so that's 50 degrees. That's the angle of elevation. All right, so the only thing that you're going to need to do is figure out this side over here. So the best thing to do is go ahead and label your angles, so that way you can figure out which side is what you're trying to find. So let's label them with our letters. And again here, it doesn't matter how you label it, it's up to you. But here's how I'm, how I'm going to label it. I'm going to call this angle A up top. This is angle B here. This is angle C here. Again, if you want to label it a different way, it's fine. It's up to you. But that's how I'm doing it. So that means here, this is angle C. That means this is side C right here, little c. But this is angle A. This is side A right here. And if this is angle B, that means it's a side B right here. 
So we are trying to find the distance from the base of the uh, base to the top of the tower. So in other words, we're trying to find side B here. That's all we're trying to find, side B. If there's anything that we need to help us to find side B, then that means we need to find that part. But here, if we look at the problem they gave us, they gave us two angles and they gave us a side here. Two angles and a side. Now, we've talked about this already between the difference between law of sine, law of cosine, and when to use each. So when they give you two angles and a side, are we using the law of sine or law of cosine? The law of sine. So give you two angles and a side. So here, because of that, we use the law of sines. All right, so if we're doing the law of sines, that means we kind of need to know like what's going on. They gave us angle B, but we don't have side B. They gave us side A, but we don't have angle A. They gave us angle C, but they gave us side C. So with the law of sine, you know, we have to have two of the same letters to be able to work out the law of sine. So what we're going to have to do here first is make sure that since they gave us side A, we need to find angle A so we can do sine A over A because that way we can have the same two letters. And then we can find B over sine B and then be good with it. So let's go to find angle A first. Okay, so we know angle A is, we don't know, that's what we're trying to find. We know angle B is 50, and angle C is 84.7 degrees. Okay, so if we were to add these two together, how much would that give us? One thirty four point seven, right? All right, and again, we're going to subtract that from. Sorry, you can't see that. You're going to subtract that from one eighty and get what A is equal to. So A should equal about forty five point three degrees. So that's our angle A. <laughs> okay. Now we have a side and an angle, and we have an angle, and we need to find this side. So now we can do a law of sines and actually deal with sine, um, uh, let's see, sine A over A, side A, equals sine B over side B. Because again, we have both A's now, and we have angle B, but we need to find side B. So let's go again, let's go to fill everything into here. All right, so after we fill the numbers in, what do we do next? Perfect, cross multiply. Okay, so if we cross multiply, we get uh, B sine 45.3. Uh, Sorry about that, guys. That looks nasty there. So let's do this in a bigger, another color. So 45.3. And that's going to equal 171 sine 50. All right, and again, we're trying to find what B is. So that means we divide both sides by this sign, 45.3. We get these two to cancel. And so we get B equals to this wonderful fraction. And last but not least, sorry, can't see that again, <laughs> my bad. Last but not least again, just go ahead and put that in the calculator. And we know how to do that by now. So we put that into the calculator and get an answer. 
And with this, because the other side given to us is a whole number, that means this answer here, B, is going to be a whole number too. So we're going to round it. So we're going to say it's approximately 184 feet. And again, make sure you put that into the calculator there. And are we in degree mode or radian mode? Right, degrees. So make sure you're in degree mode there and put into the calculator. Now with this, you have word problems. You just got to work through them, guys. And you guys are smart enough to do this. So we're going to keep doing more word problems. So hopefully you get it. And I know you will. I know you will. I also forgot to tell you this part here. Make sure you write the answers in word pro uh, the word problems in a sentence because it's not just 184 feet. It's what does it mean? So we know the distance from the base to the top of the tower. is 184 feet and now we're done ha! that's it that's all it is make sure you have that sentence because that's important oops there we go and then that's it that's all you, that's all she wrote